Okay, so put in the chart. Okay, so today we'll be looking at uh, chapter seven uh, of the book. So sorry, I'll be still using passcodes uh, notes uh, for. So we'll be looking at chapter seven, which is about uh, a model, uh, a model workflow. So for for the learning objective, he said uh, uh, we need to what explain. A model workflow includes pre-processing, fitting, and also we are going to see how these three concepts uh, play out because mainly the workflow is for us to what bundle our both our model in which and also our pre-processing pre step is to just bundle everything together into one pipeline, which is called the model workflow. So we are going to describe parts of the modeling process that occur before. Uh, the model is being fit, and also we are going to what uh, describe parts of the modeling process that occur after the model is uh, being uh, fit. So also we are going to use uh, the workflow package to create a simple workflow which is involved adding a model, adding a formula to a workflow, fitting a workflow, use a workflow to make uh, predictions uh, on the new uh, data sets. And we are also going to what updates a workflow. See how we're going to update a workflow. Then we also use a recipe with a workflow. We are going to see how uh, we are going to combine both the recipe and the workflow uh, together. So we are going to add a recipe to a workflow, uh, use workflow pool to extract object from fitted workflows. Then we are going to what uh, describe, uh, describe a workflow that uses a formula to decide how to pre-process the data. So this involves describing how workflow use a tree-based model, uh, pre-process factors, predictors, involve also add uh, a special formula to, to workflow with the formula argument, which is like a add model, uh, describe a, a, a workflow step that are yet are not yet included uh, in the tidy model, which this has to do with uh, other uh, extension packages. So, like in the in the first part uh, of a book, of this in this uh, first part, uh, they show uh, this uh, flow charts, uh, which shows uh, our modeling uh, workflows uh, steps that have been taken in the modeling process. We have seen in the, our in our sub previous uh, discussion how uh, we can use uh, the parsnip uh, package uh, to split our data into both training and test uh, sets. So we are going to have training data. We are going to have test data. So this both this training and test data, uh, we are going to apply the recipe. So once we apply the recipe, today we are going to have uh, we are going to have prep test data, so we are also going to have prep train data because we have this data have been pre-processed using, using the recipe. So we, we then need to watch this prep train data, uh, we can use it in fitting, uh, fitting our model. So that model in which we've been fit, then we are going to make our predictions based on the prep test data to know how well uh, this uh, our model is performing. So that is just uh, uh, what this uh, flow chart uh, is explaining in the book. Uh, in, the, in the first, uh, this part, which is about a demonstration, how the workflow uh, process takes. I think the first, we need to load uh, the tidy verse. Uh, we need to also load uh, the tidy model. So we set our random seed, which is one, uh, two, three for reproducibility. Then in this case, they were using uh, uh, this data set that comes uh, from, the, from the Tidy Tuesday. So which is a Tidy Tuesday. This is the description file. This is the data source where we can uh, get the data. So this data is, we name it as SF trees. So they, we, they read the data in here from, uh, from GitHub, so 
and then they use the the cabo extra package the cabo function to form a table so they just say the head as fs3 sf3 so they, they need the first uh, 10 rows and then they say cabo extra scroll box the width should be 100 percent so and uh, this is the data which is a tree id legal state also in in this data they are trying to make predictions on the dbh which is the uh, diameter, the diameter at breast height. So they now say some data exploration and cleaning steps. So we need uh, to use Kabul Extra, the Kabul function again, scheme R, which is scheme, which will scheme the data, give us some very useful uh, uh, summary statistics from the SF trees. And then with the use Kabul Extra scroll box, which, which is also set uh, to 100%. So in that step, uh, so yeah, they were using, uh, they were doing some filtering to remove all the missing data. Uh, they, uh, they renamed, they renamed uh, the DBH to DAM. Dates, all the dates should be renamed to what dates planted. They remove uh, missing data in both uh, the legal status and also the arm, they drop all the missing data. Then they also filter for where we have latitude that is less than or equals to 40 and longitude that is greater than or equals to minus uh, 125. And then they filter all the diameter at breast height that is less than or equals to, that is less than or equals to 100 and diameter that is greater than zero and then uh, the filter site order that is greater than or equals to zero, and then they select everything, but they omit, they drop the plot at uh, the plot size. So this tree clean. They not, they also did uh, the scheme use the scheme R on this. So once they scheme, so this shows the this is for uh, the clean. Data set, I think there were still some missing uh, data here. But, uh, but when we try to visualize this uh, uses, using the tree clean aesthetics where, where X is diameter at breast height plus a uh, geom histogram to look at uh, the distribution, then they place the X on the log 10 scale. So when uh, we try to view, View the histogram is still like showing uh, that the data set is still uh, skewed, maybe to uh, to the right, but it somehow looks as if uh, it follows uh, the our our normal uh, distribution uh, pattern. So uh, in this other part, what they did here in the exploratory states, they were just using geom being 2D plus Jump Smooth to add uh, the to add uh, to add the the smooth line. So this shows uh, the counts, which is this this, and this is still this shows uh, our diameter at uh, at 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 breast height. Okay, so I think this is just what they did because normally before we start our modeling process, we need to explore the data. We need to really understand uh, the data uh, we are working with. So the next, I think we are going to go straight into the uh, modeling with uh, the workflow. So first of all, as we all know, we need to use the initial, the initial split function to split this data set into both train and test uh, sets. So we have the trees clean, and then we mutate the diameter at breast size. We say you should place it at a log 10 of diameter. So the proportion is 80% is going to be for the training, then 20% is going to be for testing. So in order for me to get, we to get the training. So we just say training, we pass in the tree split. So this is trees training, this for trees testing. We pass the testing on the tree split. So this is going to give us uh, the testing. So they did some some kind of data uh, pre-processing step using uh, the recipe package. 
which is what uh, we are going to discuss in our next discussion next week. We are going to see how the recipe really works. So they, here they use the trees training, and then they say diameter. This is the data. The diameter is equals to tilde dot. So it means that the diameter at breast height is going to be the response. Dot means that every other, we are considering every other uh, variable in the data as being our predictors. And then they use the update rule function. Then they say the tree ID, then the address, they rename the ID to be new rule. And then they say step indicates underscore NA, which is date planted. But I don't know uh, what the step indicate underscore NA uh, function is doing. I don't know if somebody can correct me. I don't know if this is checking for, if they actually NA in the data, is it to drop it or I don't understand. Hello? Yeah. Yes, I was asking that what is the step indicate NA? What is the function doing in the on this okay. recipe? Okay, so here mm -hmm. uh, they um, they um, because they they are. Uh, can you just uh, why don't you uh, don't we open up uh, R? Okay, and okay. Uh, uh, do a question mark with the function. So we have the uh, the explanation. Um, okay. Okay. It says create missing data column indicators. So in this case, um, create and append additional binary columns to the data set to indicate which observations are missing. So in, here, in, in this case, we, uh, we need to do that for, yes. uh, for having uh, um, uh, one more um, like a set of, of observations. And then, uh, so we we jump on the other uh, step in the. Can can you go back into all you have in, in the in your R? Okay, so then we mutate. So basically, this uh, um, we need one more uh, colon. Okay, uh, and the date planted, we use this uh, uh, to indicate uh, that there's a, a NA. Okay, that means there are NA in the date planted. Yeah. Okay, okay, thank you very much. So I think from there, the nouns go to step mutate, then they say date planted, then they say if else, not, that is, they are checking for all the unique uh, value, not the missing, not is.na in date planted. If it is true, it should return date planted, all the date planted. Then if it's, it is false, it should return uh, this value, which is 1st of January 1950. So those were the two conditions they passed. And then they use step order for all the nominal predictors. Then the threshold should be 0 0.01. And then they use the step dummy, all nominal uh, predictors. So mm -hmm. this is just the pre-processing step for the data. That is the recipe, which we the save in the trees uh, recipe. So they now go further to fit the model. Uh, they define the object as a linear model spec, the linear model specification. So the model is a linear regression because the value in which we are trying to predict the diameter at breast height, they are all numeric. So they use the LM and then they set the engine to be LM. So the non binding yeah. all- Basically, sorry if I interrupt you. Basically th there was something that we mentioned. Uh, in this case, we, if we use linear regression, 
um, we might uh, don't need to specify uh, the the mode, and in fact, it's not specified. But even the engine, if you are using LM, okay. So basically, if you use the linear regression, it's it should be enough. So it is enough for for setting up the, the model specification in this case. Okay, so that means in that case, the mode is automatically detected that it is regression. Yeah. Okay, exactly. thank you very much. So now for the workflow, we just call the workflow this way, and then we add the model. So the model we call, the model we have uh, defined, which is a linear model spec. We pass the linear model spec in, and then we add the recipe, which is trees recipe. So the workflow, we have seen that the workflow have helped us to bind these two, uh, these two processing step together. That is our modeling and our pre-processing step. We have bring those two together into a one single pipeline called uh, the workflow. And this is what we call the trees uh, workflow LM, which is the object. So when we now pass this tree workflow LM to a fit, so we are now trying to see how we can fit uh, the model. So we are fitting this model on the trees training. So we pass in the trees uh, training. So um, once we pass in the trees training, so we can do some other uh, extracts for some, but we can, all, we can also uh, use this uh, uh, model to make prediction on the test sets. But for here, they were doing some, uh, they were doing uh, some uh, extracting for some model parameter using this tidy function that is coming from the broom package. They uh, extract recipe from the fitted workflow LM. So they just need the first three. Uh, and this is going to show, this shows the terms, uh, the value retained, and also the ID, which is the first three in which we requested for. It shows this. So for the terms, this is legal status, uh, DPW maintain, ID, these are order. So we can also, do tidy on extract fit parsnip. We pass in the fitted workflow LM. So when we do that, it's going to show us the term. It goes to show us the estimates from the model, uh, the standard error, the statistics, and also the p the p value to show if it is actually significant or not. And uh, they also did uh, trees testing on the predicted LM. So they make some prediction on the fitted workflow LM. So the, the prediction is on the test set. They are trying to work, see how these test sets, uh, how the model perform on using new data, which is a test tree testing. So then they use dollar sign to show that they are calling for the, the predicted uh, values. So they now check for the root mean square error. This is like a, a to evaluate to see how well this model is doing. They call the trees testing, the diameter, and also the predicted LM. So when we check that, we can see that RMSE from the model is uh, 0.316, which is around 32% uh, percent, uh, of the variation. It's been explained uh, uh, by the, the model in which we are working on. So they now look, use the different models same with same recipe. So we can have different model in which we are fitting, but we want to make sure we pass through use uh, the same uh, recipe. So how do we go about that? This, we, we, they use uh, the random forest spec, which is the random forest. Here the mode should be regression, M try, should be three, the trees should be set uh, to 50, minimum N should be 10, and then they set the engine uh, to be ranger. So the num called trees uh, workflow LM, which is the object we have uh, fitted above, and then they update 
underscore model. This is going to update the previous uh, model uh, in which we have fitted and it's going to update it to what the random forest spec because we are passing in a new model uh, specification. So we use uh, this update underscore model to update our previous model. So once we run this, it's going to update the model to use now use the random forest uh, spec. So that is a new model specification in which we have just passed to our initial model and with workflow in which we fitted. So when we now say fitted workflow RF, trees workflow RF and then fit, we fit it on the training set. So this is going to fit that model. So we can do some evaluation to make predictions on this new model in which uh, we are fitted. So we pass in the fitted workflow RF. So this prediction on the trees testing. So we can now check for the root mean square error again which it still shows that we have 0 0.3316. So we can also check the root mean square error for trees testing, diameter, and predicted RF. This is for the random forest model. This is for the linear model. So when we check for the random forest, we are having 0 0.307 for the random forest uh, model. So uh, in this part, they said same model, but different uh, pre-processing. We can have the same model in which we have built, but we can have that same model. We can apply different uh, pre-processing step to that same model. So this is for the, our linear model workflow in which we have defined. We remove the recipe using the remove underscore recipe function to remove our initial recipe. Then we add a formula, which is diameter at breast height tilde is.na in date planted. So check for na plus, uh, plus longitude. And then we now fit this on the trace training. We now fit the, on the training data set. And then we make prediction on the trees uh, trees testing. So we save that object as formula predictions. We save it as formula predictions. So when we now call RMSEVEC, we call the trees testing dollar sign diameter. Then we say formula underscore predictions dollar sign dot predicted. Uh, in our show, we now have 0 0.35 seven four for the new uh, root mean square error that we that we got uh, uh, from that uh, from that model. So that is just uh, basically how how useful the workflow is. The workflow has helped us to bring both our model that we have built using the parsnip and also our pre-processing step from the recipe we can just combine those two steps together uh, to call it uh, a workflow, which is similar to what uh, we have in uh, other programming like in Python, I think they call it uh, like a model pipeline, just as they, uh, they discuss in the book. So for the next step, why is this slowing? For the next, okay, it's about uh, managing many workflow. So this case talks about we might have more than one workflow in our model spec. So how how do we manage them uh, in our modeling process? So here we are having random forest spec, which is a random forest mode is regression number of try number of trees minimum number, which is 10, the, the engine, we set the engine to be a uh, ranger. So we can look at workflow sets. So in this process, we need to pass in those workflow as a list. So here we say the pre-processing, which is going to be a list of different, of different workflow in which we want to pass into the model. So for the variables, 
workflow variables. Here we have diameter, which is going to be the response uh, variable. Then the predictors is going to be this, which is longitude, latitude, and site order. For, that is for the first workflow that we name variable. Then the second workflow, which is simple formula, we are going to have diameter as our response variable. And this is going to be these other steps. These are going to be uh, the, the explanatory variables. So the last, we have trees recipe, which is trees uh, recipe. We just pass in the trees recipe. So for the models, the model is also passing as a list. Here we have LM, which is we pass in our linear model spec. RF, we pass in our random forest spec. So when we call the three workflows, when we call the three workflow, it now show we have workflow ID, the info, uh, the options, the and also the results. So when we have the three workflows, and then we can go, we can make our computation row wise to go across, to apply it across uh, the rows. Then we want to mutate fitted uh, workflow, which is a list of fits, info dollars and workflow. So info dollars and workflow, we want to index, uh, we are indexing for the first uh, column. Then we pass in our data, which is trees training. And then we do the same thing for, for the next column, which is predicted, which is a list of predicts. We pass in our fitted workflow. Then we pass in the trees training because we are making all our prediction on the training data set. So, so when we call the trees uh, prediction and then we mutate root mean square error should be RMSE vec. Then we pass in the trees testing, which is, uh, which is the, our diameter at breast height. Then the predicted should be predicted value. We need all the predicted value from this. So we are going to have we are going to have this uh, nice uh, table back, but we have the, our, all our predicted value is going to be in one column. All the value for the root mean square error is going to also be uh, in one column in which we can now extract uh, our we can now start, uh, we can uh, extract uh, all this information out. We can use collect uh, metrics. We can also, uh, to, we can also extract all this information out from, uh, from this uh, model uh, workflow in which uh, we have uh, built. So before we go into uh, the next part, I don't know if there are any comments or other contribution before we go into the next part. Yeah, I like, um, if, you, if you go just scroll back up uh, for just a bit where the workflow set is. Yeah, right. Yeah, here, three workflow and workflow set. So inside this function, basically we specify a pre-processing thing and a model. Inside the pre-processing, we have a list of variables, formula, and three. Uh, because this is a three uh, recipe. Yes. Because we are using, uh, we are doing a three uh, a random forest uh, model. Yes. Or is a three recipe? Uh, this one is a random forest model. Yeah. Uh, okay, so we can specify. Did you did? Uh, okay, did, did we assign these names into the list? So you can call it whatever you like. You can call it model, and then uh, you specify the type of model. So. You give yes. uh, this this names. You can use whatever you like, basically. 
Yes, I think in the book, I think there was the, the example in the book. Let me check the example in the book, what they were discussing, many model. I think the example was a bit clear. This after out. And so multiple. Okay, creating multiple workflow mm -hmm. at once. Okay, like in this example, they just said this is the location, the column, then they pass in everything as a list. So this longitude should be cell price till the uh, longitude, then latitude, they use sale price till the latitude, then cord should be sale price till the this, the neighborhood. So this is for the parameters, the, both the response and also the predictors, they pass in everything as a list. So they now came down here into the workflow set, uh, location of models, workflow set, then the pre-processing, the equals to location, the models is equals to list, LM is equal to LM model. So this one, they use only one model. Why in a, our notes, we are used two different type of model, both linear and also random forest. So in the book, they use only one type of model. So, and, and the, it's the same set, just as we explained in the book. They use only one model here. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, but here the location is uh, is the recipe, so we use different. Yes. Uh, yes. We, we use different recipes, uh, but just one model. While in your yes. example, there's uh, more recipes and more model. Oh no, we yes. use just. Okay. Okay. Because we have uh, three, uh, and the model. Um, Yeah, so we use a linear model and random forest. Yes. Okay, okay. Yeah, thank you. Next, okay, so I think this is just like a summary. So we have seen how the formula is used will depend on the model specification. That is how we use the formula uh, depends on the specification of the model because in a, if we are using a mixed model or a radical model, we need to have, I think that we need to provide a different formula syntax, just like as they did here. Let me screw up in the notes again, uh, like the, for the uh, uh, mixed model, we need to use the multi-level uh, multi level mod. So they now say it should be linear regression. Then the engine, they are using a different engine here, which is, LMER. So they now set the workflow and then they add variables. So the outcome, which is going to be the response, here they say distance, then the predictors should be sex, age, subject, and then they add the model, which is multi level spec, which is what we have defined here. Then for the formula, they now put distance explained by sex plus where edge, which is gonna be the, our random effect. So that is how they pass in the random effects them into the model. So if they now, they now fit this multi-level workflow on, on, the, on, the, on the data set, which is the orthodont uh, data, which is can be found in uh, NLME package. So when they now fit this, they can now call the multi, level fit. So we can now pipe this to the extract fixed engine, then you pipe it to ANOVA, we can get the, our ANOVA table out from that model. So when they now call this, you now show that it's workflow trained. Preprocessor is a variable because we added, we add variable here, yeah, not, we did not add formula. So the preprocessor is going to be variable. Then the model, is a linear regression model. Uh, Pre-processor outcome is distance. Predictors is, these are the predictors. So it just give us 
uh, useful uh, term in which we can get from the model. So the formula really matter how we specify the formula in our model. Then they say that if a modeling package uses the formula not only for pre-processing or as the syntax not supported by the model dot matrix, you can specify formula by add uh, add underscore model because the example I showed earlier on, if you run that example using the best R function, we, we are will be unable to run that model because the base R will not understand how to interpret uh, those model terms. So later, the workflow package will contain tools to help with post-processing such as creating hard predictions from class uh, probabilities. So basically, uh, the main idea for the workflow, we, we have seen our workflow help us to bring our modeling, our model object that we have built with the parsing package and also the, our pre-processing step from the recipe, we can see how we can combine everything together uh, into just one step, uh, which is called uh, uh, the workflow. I don't, I think that's, that is all for the chapter. The last is just the notes, the video. Okay. Thank you. Okay, maybe you can just post up so that once they are editing the 